morning, GMS. I'm David Brinson. And I'm Alex Connor. Welcome to the GMS News Show for the week of January 26th. Students, remember, wear your masks. You need to have your nose and mouth covered at all times. This includes when talking to your friends. Thanks for your understanding and cooperation. A reminder, GMS students, if you're getting picked up after school, pl please form two lanes as we did before the hybrid schedule. This will help so much with the traffic. In 2020-2021, GMS yearbooks are still on sale. Go to www.yearbookforever.com to order yours today. The price will be going up, so lock in these savings now. It's not too late to join the wrestling team. Any, any student interested can talk to Coach Welch to get details. A quick reminder about the dress code. Remember, all pants must be standard length garments. Therefore, sh shorts, skirts, dresses, and more must be fingertip length or longer with, with or without garments underneath. Jeans must not have any kind of rips, holes, and or tears above the fingertips. Thank you for your understanding. Until further notice, attendance to all athletic events has been limited to two people per athlete. Thank you for your cooperation. Now let's go to the interview of the week, top trending in the GMS sports update. Have a great week, everybody. And remember to stay safe. Welcome to the GMS News Show interview of the week. I am here with GMS Guidance Counselor, Mrs. McGuire. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here with you today. How are you? I'm good. good. Would you like to start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your job? Yes. So I'm Mrs. McGuire. I am so excited. I've been a part of the middle school for almost four years now. I started here as an intern under Miss Marshall and I got to work with Miss Santos and it was wonderful. And so after my internship, um, I interviewed to be a part of the amazing guidance counseling team. And so now I'm in my third year of being here as the student services advisor. And what I get to do is work with students every day. I work with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. It can be anything from homework to family to friendship or personal issues, whatever it may be, and I get to work and hang out with them. Aside from my job, I've been married almost six years, which is crazy. And I have an 11 month old son, Archie, who I had last February. Um, why did you choose counseling and was there any other job you would like to do? So when I was in fifth grade, I had made the decision that I wanted to be a lawyer or politician. I was set. I was going to be a lawyer or politician one day. And the reason I mainly wanted to do those things was because I wanted to help people. I wanted to serve people. Well, as I was in middle school, I kept doing exploring of careers, just like we get to do here at the middle school. And I thought more and more about being a lawyer. And I was pretty for certain that's what I wanted to do. Well, then when I was in high school, I got to study psychology. So when you get to high school, you have different electives that you get to take. And psychology was one that I took. And I began to realize I really had a passion for learning more about how to serve people well. And so this idea of being a politician or a lawyer to help people kind of switched into this idea of serving people well, helping people through the avenue of counseling. And so about my junior year, I made that decision to change um, my focus and my track. So when I was in college, I got to study psychology and counseling. And then, um, yeah, just kind of has grown from there. Then I had to get my master's degree in counseling. So wanted to be a politician or a lawyer. And now here I am, a counselor. Where'd you go to college at? I went to a college in Missouri called Evangel University. It's a smaller school down in Missouri. And then I got my master's degree at IUPUI in Indianapolis. Um, did you participate in any clubs, activities, or sports when you were in school? Yes, I did. I did theater. I loved to act. And even just as much as acting, I loved to do the sets and costumes and help with like makeup and things like that. So I did, I did um, theater. I love to do any kind of acting. I also played softball 
uh, all from the time that I was in early elementary school until my junior year of high school. So did I'm guessing you liked Halloween growing up? You know what? I actually really did enjoy Halloween. I loved dressing up. And usually my mom and I would make my costumes. That was usually my favorite part. During the summer, we would start working on whatever it is my costume was going to be in the fall. Mm -hmm. Where is your favorite place to eat and what would you like to order there? Oh, this is a hard one. So I'm from Wisconsin originally, and there is an Italian restaurant. My dad is Italian. My grandparents are from Italy. And so there's this Italian restaurant where I'm from called Infocinos. And they have this meal there called a pizza burger steak. And basically what it is, it's like Italian sausage put into like a steak form. It has like melted like mozzarella cheese on it. It's so good. Anyway, so I would go to Infocinos in Kenosha, Wisconsin and get a pizza burger steak. Um, are you really a Green Bay Packers fan? Absolutely. I am a Packer backer until forever. I will always cheer on the Green Bay Packers my parents are diehard Packer fans, my aunts and uncles, my cousins. It is a family affair. This is actually kind of a funny story. So I'm actually wearing my Greenwood slash Green Bay Packer vest today. Um, my husband, he's from Arkansas. And so he, they don't have a professional football team there. And so he grew up liking the Saints. Well, when we started like for real serious dating, we had to have a, a serious conversation. I said, you know what? If this is going to be a long haul relationship, um, you're going to have to dump the Saints and become a Packers fan. And he, he thought I was joking. And I was like, no, I'm dead serious. And I guess he liked me quite a bit or loved me. And um, he has since become a Packer fan. So it is a very serious thing in our household, a very serious thing in my family. We love the Green Bay Packers. So... What would you do if someone walked up to you and said, like, Green Bay Packers aren't good or something? You know, I would have to evaluate if they were okay, because anybody who can't recognize how awesome the Packers are, there's probably something not <laughs> like they, you have to recognize the greatness that is the Green Bay Packers. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, thank you for coming on our show today, Mrs. McGuire. Have a great week. Thanks for having me on. I'll see you later. Yep. Bye. Hello. Welcome to Top Trending, where we share the top weird and trending stories of the week. I'm Drew Norton, and let's get started with number three. A seven-year-old boy from India had been complaining about his teeth and jaw aching, and when he went to the dentist, they noticed something a little strange. The dentist had to remove 526 teeth from within his jaw. Romania said the boy was suffering from a very rare condition called compound composition odonatoma. What caused the condition is unclear, but it could be genetic or could be due to environmental factors like radiation. Now the young boy is fine and thriving. Number two, is it possible to be indestructible? The scientist studying the uncrushable beetle, the diabolical iron clad beetle sought this out in a recent study. The beetle can withstand pressure up to 39,000 times its own weight. Insects don't have skeletons and instead rely on outer shells called exoskeletons. The beetle's secret lies in the information of its exoskeleton. While many beetles can fly, the DIB lost its ability to fly long ago, but kept the wing-like shells that once pr protected its wings. What makes it so strong is that the shell has layers so it can bend without breaking, and with some layers can break while others remain undamaged. What's more surprising is how the wings fit together. They connect like jigsaw puzzles with which locks them together, making it int immensely dis difficult to separate. Now scientists are looking at ways of emitting the DIB's exoskeleton and using these discoveries to see if they can make stronger materials in the future. Number one, 
Robert Galinsky, a New York State man, files a lawsuit against the makers of King's Hawaiian Sweet Rolls because the rolls aren't made in Hawaii. The man complained that the front of the package says Hilo Hawaii, but when you flip it over it says Made in Torrance, California. Robert said the packaging misled him to, pr to purchasing them, thinking he was getting real Hawaiian rolls. The King's Hawaiian Sweet Rolls website said that Robert Taria originally made the rolls in Hailu, Hawaii, when he first opened a bakery named Robert's Bakery. It later got renamed to King's Bakery and expanded to Honolulu, after that, it moved to Torrance, California and stayed with the name King's Bakery. Although no one has publicly, publicly responded to this lawsuit, most people know Robert Golinski will not win this one. Welcome to GMS Sports. I'm Brandon Real. Monday, January, on Monday, January 25th, Eighth grade, eighth, eighth grade girls basketball home versus De De Decatur Middle School, at 15 p.m. and seventh seventh grade girls basketball away at Decatur Miss Middle School at 3 p.m. at 5:30 p.m. Tuesday, January 26, seventh grade girls basketball away at Clark Pleasant Middle School at 5:30. PM GMS Wrestling Home versus Meridian Middle School at 5:30 PM GMS Women Team Home versus Plainfield 6 o'clock PM Wednesday January 27th 7th and 8th grade boys basketball away has been canceled Thursday January 28th GMS Wrestling Team Home versus Indian Creek Middle School at 5:30 p.m. GMS Swimming Team Home versus Martinsville East Middle School at 6 o'clock p.m.